Good morning, YouTube. Thank you for tuning in to Cat Scooter Motor Vlogs. Today is uh, May 7th, 2021. And I think it's only like 5.20 a.m. in the morning. Let's see. 5.32 a.m. to be exact. So, I'm just pulling out of the driveway here. We're going to head across uh, town to my clinic. And we're going to go uh, feed these here cats. And I'm just going to vlog a little bit of the journey on the way over, alright? I hope you guys enjoy the journey, the scenery. And uh, we'll pick up little things to talk about on the way. I just want to give a real quick shout out to every single one of my subscribers that's uh, subscribed to my channel. You guys are really helping uh, my channel in a big way. I appreciate that. Right now as I look at the analytics on uh, who's watching uh, my, my YouTube videos, it shows that the the viewers that's not subscribed got like 57% while the subscribers are uh, watching 46% or 40 something percent so real shout out to you guys man I was amazed by that normally when somebody looks up the analytics on something like that it really outweighs that the subscribers are not watching most of the videos but the viewers are that's not subscribed and I was really like, man, right on, man. My subscribers are really down to earth, man. I really appreciate that support, you guys. With that being said, man, let's go ahead and see what this morning's got for us, guys. We got enough gas, it seems like. Well, it's hard to tell. It's been on there. This is the third day it's been on there, so... I'm expecting that meter to start coming down today on this trip. So right now, guys, we'll pay attention. It says full. Being that today's the third day that it's on full, I suggest that I'm going to have to put in gas either on the way going or on the way coming back. And that's what I mean about these things come, when it starts coming off the of full, it comes quick. Like, uh, when it starts coming off of the F line, the full line, within 20 miles I'm going to need gas. Or within like maybe even 12 miles, something like that. been experiencing a bad headache last night guys I don't understand what the hell wrong with me it's probably nothing but um, I googled it man this is how bad this headache was bothering me I went ahead and googled about how to get rid of headaches then it was talking about on Google it showed uh, a couple remedies you know massage your head and whatnot maybe a warm ice pack cold ice pack but uh, it all talks about the tension in your muscles and uh, if you're wearing a hat all the time like this helmet squeezing pretty tight on my head I probably need a new helmet, but I really haven't been riding my scooter too much. Only early in the mornings and that's it. But um, what I'm thinking is I always wear a hat and I don't really drink any water no more. I always uh, like my coffee. I like coffee. It don't matter what time it is of the day. I like making my little Cadillac coffee and it seems to give me a little boost to get into things. You know, like uh, I do a lot of internet stuff seem to always be on the YouTube and if I do a little gaming then if I'm watching uh, videos on YouTube such as like FBI files I like mysterious stuff like that like uh, detective stuff how people try to get away with stuff and it never it just never actually goes good for them you know but yeah I watch stuff like that all the time let's go ahead and get in the next lane shall we I find out it's a smoother of a ride if I get on this side. All right. It's a little cool today, man. I wasn't expecting for it to be so cold out here so I actually dressed for the occasion I got my motorcycle gear on again but I just took off all the like uh what I did I washed my jacket yesterday and I was like wondering I mean iffy about washing it it says hand wash only 
but I ain't fixing to get in that bathtub with this thing and start washing it by hand. But um, anyhow, I just took out all the pads, I took off the inner uh, layer, the thermal, and it comes out with the zipper and a couple, like in the sleeves, they got a couple of buttons that you gotta tie around, you know. But anyhow, uh, and it comes out pretty good, man. A couple, two buttons and the rest was all zippered, then it pulls right out. So then you're left with like a windbreaker. So I'm wearing like a windbreaker right now. I didn't put it in the pads, I didn't put it back in the thermal. And I do got a hoodie underneath. But what's good about this jacket is that the wind doesn't go through it. So the wind's hitting me and going around it. My other jackets that I have, the wind goes through. So I'd be freezing really bad right now. But yeah, it's always good to have a nice win uh, windproof jacket and waterproof, but mostly windproof. Yeah, it is chilly out here. I'm feeling my like the my helmet. All the vents on my helmet they're all uh, closed up because uh, during winter I actually broke off the tags on accident. The little tags that the tabs that you uh, close and open your vents with they get brittle from being out in the elements out here so i guess uh, i wasn't familiar with this helmet and there was it was already on the closed position and i'm keep on tugging thinking it's open and yeah i broke them off man oh crap something happened here Damn it, man. I just shredded my other belt. Alright, guys. Good thing I got my tools with me. Let me get to work. I'll be right back. So this is what, a, when you shred your belt, what a, look at. It's, a, it's always good to have your impact. So today, I do have my impact. Last time this happened, guys, I was actually, um. Uh, last time this actually happened, let me kill the motor. Last time this happened to me, I was unprepared. And I never even opened up that thing before, which is on this side. So right now, I gotta open up that thing right there. And uh, I gotta change out my belt. I got two brand new belts with me. I got my impact gun, I got my socket, and I got my little, my little cross arm thing, a little teeth tool that I take off the six little bolts. That's so it should be up and running within 12 seconds. I mean, 12 minutes. I'll see you guys right now in a few. Sorry, I'm not going to record it. I'm just going to do this real quick and I'll continue back on the road in a little bit. All right, guys. Now that's what it looks like when your belt shreds on you on the on the road. What's weird is, what's weird is I just changed up these rollers two days ago. I guess I didn't do a too good of a job expecting the belt. I was just looking at the top of the belt and everything looked to be still brand new. But you actually, that goes to show, you actually would like to uh, expect it a little further. By maybe taking it off, pinning it, and seeing where all the cracks are. But just because, uh, just by the belt being on, and if it does look good, doesn't really mean it's good because I just checked this out two days yesterday I did a sorry really sorry inspection because what I did was look at the top and it seemed that everything looked okay it looks like something's in rubbing you know one thing I do notice ah, look at that starter bendix All right, guys, so let me go ahead and get to changing all this. Good thing I do got my belts and stuff. I got extra belts. I got my impact gun. And we'll be up and running in no time. That's just uh, putting me back a little bit. But yeah, I got me an extra belt right here. And I got my impact gun on there. So I'll see you guys in just a few. All right, you two. Actually, I've already got that uh, belt back on and I've already rode at least uh, about maybe five miles four miles 
And right now I just needed to swap up my battery and continue off the vlog with you guys. Well, man, uh, that right there is an experience I'm going to go ahead and still upload to YouTube, man. Because I believe it's uh, knowledge for any beginner rider out there to anything like that does happen to no matter what rider, you know, that's out there. You always got to be uh, ready for the situation at hand. So just as you've seen it in the video, I'm currently just moseying around, scooting down the road. And then uh, my back tire locked up, man. I guess my belt, it shredded and it got tangled up. And then, uh, thank God, my back tire broke free. Because it would have put me on the ground, guys. That's the first time, or my first time that the belt shredded on me, it just automatically just came to a smooth stop. Unlike this time. This one sort of startled me because I was riding. And then I felt my back tire just lock up when I was exhilarated. And the throttle is, you know, when I was twisting the throttle, I, I knew something was wrong. I was like, uh-oh. Uh and then it already came to my mind what happened. But at that time, it was already snapped. I guess it got tangled and then it snapped uh, the belt. Because when I took off the aerator and the clutch back there, I had to uh, pull out a whole bunch of windy, uh, what's it called, that Kevlar screen that they come in the, these belts. So that was pretty tough to snap, but it snapped it from the heavy heavies I am rolling on this at a good speed about maybe 20 something miles an hour that's what made that thing snap and I was glad too because any motorcycle that locks up its uh, back tire scooter or whatever it, uh, it's going to lay down the rider automatically lay them down every single time so that's why it's best to get the ABS brakes where you, you don't lock up no tire it uh, comes to a quick stop without skidding that tire Without locking it up yeah you don't ever want to lock up your tire on a two-wheel but yeah man uh man what experience Dicks, just two days ago guys i was expecting inspecting my uh belt just by my eye so i was actually opening up the housing there to uh throw in my new rollers the dr pulley I said, well, since I got this housing open, let me go ahead and inspect this here belt. And I did it the lazy way. I didn't even take off the belt, which I should have. Any uh, belt inspection, you should thoroughly look at it. Because look at my halfway looking, uh, my half, let me just say, excuse my language, my half ass way about inspecting that belt, <laughs> it led to a belt breaking just two days down, uh, difference. So you really can't tell what the top of the belt looks like. You need to, you need to pull it off. You need to bend it and look for all these little cracks and whatnot. If they got cracks, change it. Because those cracks are going to break right through that belt. You don't see no cracks. You don't see no wear. Especially no cracks. Yeah. I guess you're okay to go for a little bit longer. But any kind of, even if it's a half of a crack. You always want to change it out. So right now I do got one more brand new belt that I'm carrying with me so I'm actually going to go back home to Amazon and pick up a couple more I try to always buy at least like I always try to keep one or two I always figure why keep two what if I put one on wrong and it broke from just a couple distance you know what I mean yeah, I always like to keep two of everything here uh oh stay stay right there lady so yeah I go as far as even carrying an impact gun man <laughs> Uh, sure in the hell ain't wanting to be on the side of the road too long All right guys, we're close to the clinic now man But I'm coming the back way to this clinic instead of coming in that long old Road that goes pretty quick through the town So basically I'm coming the back way when I hit the stop sign I'm gonna turn left and I'm gonna turn right and we'll end up going behind all the stores to the clinic You'll see now. I want you guys to hear me out on this a lot of, I've been asked I've been asked a couple times am I still feeding these cats even though I'm coming up here uh, lesser and lesser each time and I want to all right I have responded to those questions and I actually want you guys to look in this video what I mean by I've been keeping these cats fed because when I roll up here I want you guys to see what's on the ground and even though it's been a while that I've been up here it's been a couple days but I'm knowing that I left enough food that these cats should still have plenty enough food left over and I still brung them more. 
and I wanted to show you guys showing is uh, believing or showing believing is, or showing is believing or seeing is believing I believe that's the saying anyhow man I got all tongue twisted at the end over there there should be some cat food on the ground for the stray cats two piles so I'm gonna park in the middle of these two piles and I'm gonna add more to the piles and then I'll see them in another two days but I believe this here facility right here I'm just thinking man because there's so much cat food that they seem to only be eating the KFC and leaving the cat food I don't know man a hungry cat would eat any kind of food and they ate it all this other time but unlike before they're not eating up all this food like before but right there see I do feed these cats really good guys this is where I normally park every time I come there's still a pile there and a pile right there and then in my bag right here I already figured there's gonna be a whole bunch of food right here I basically brought KFC and with a couple more quarts of cat food but KFC leftovers all right guys I'll see you in a few I had to pull over you guys I left the clinic and uh, I made it at least about four miles down the road and just entering uh, Turlock right here but just that way a few uh, a few miles just not even a few miles a quarter mile would be keys this is the beginning of Turlock but I got so hot I had to pull off my hoodie and take off the uh, the heated gloves I had I know I could have just turned off the heat but the big old puppy gloves that they are still hot you know so I figured I just throw on my summer motorcycle gloves peel up the hoodie and uh, put on these here uh, army green saddlebags because I didn't know where else to put uh, my stuff at I normally only have this underneath the seat for shopping uh, occasions only but right now it does come in handy Anybody interested in a black pair of saddlebags? They're twenty dollars more if you want black. <laughs> yeah, I, bought, I picked up the army green for like twenty-six dollars. Same material, same everything. And if you just wanted the color black, it would have been uh, twenty dollars more. They were out of black. Not that I wouldn't have bought it, but um, I went ahead and bought the army green regardless if he had uh, the black in stock or not. But yeah, I think it is a good buy, guys. On the on Amazon's website, it shows it being on a on a normal looking like a Honda motorcycle, like maybe a 750. And uh, they have a scooter next to it. It says for motorcycle or scooters, but uh, and the description when you when it's for the scooter, it says it has to be 150 cc or greater. So I took the gamble because I know I got a 150cc scooter coming still. Uh, being that I've ordered one. And I was thinking, well, I'm going to try to throw this on the 50cc scooter. It's only $26 anyhow. So if it doesn't work out on the 50cc scooter, it ain't wasting much money. And I could always just uh, throw it in the closet and bring it out for when I get my 150cc scooter. Pretty sketch down on this road guys I'm over here right in the bicycle lane on my I'm only half half throttle though all right back in the middle of the road guys Yeah, but uh, back to the saddlebags guys before I start to get my mind all sketched out right now because of what I was doing And look at we're right here at the stop sign together. Maybe I, the, I always tell myself man just stay in the road regardless man Why put myself in jeopardy way over here on a little bike lane like that? 
But anyhow, man, yeah, about these saddlebags, like I was saying, I'm digging them, guys. I'm digging it, I mean. When I go shopping, it helps me out tremendously. And then, like right now, back uh, before I bought this saddlebag, even if I wanted to peel this off, this big jacket that I got on, normally from all the stuff I carry as far as extra equipment, extra stuff for the scooter, I got so much stuff for the scooter that I carry in both of my boxes that it doesn't hardly leave no room only for like a hat. I can put my baseball cap in there and I can put maybe uh, my gloves and maybe something else small, small. But yeah, both of my boxes are full with extra stuff that I always carry because when I broke down, man, and I was unprepared for the, the breakdown, you know, I told myself I'm never going to be uh, caught unprepared again. I'm going to make sure I got everything for any occasion that might happen on this that's got to do with the outside of the engine, you know? Anything that's got to do on the outside of the engine, I'm ready for it, man. So I do pack heavy when it comes to carrying extra parts and stuff. which it paid off this morning. Damn, I'm tired. I've been up last night, man. I freaking, I don't know. I'm not the one that normally gets these here headaches. But I had such a headache last night, boy, that I had to even jump in the shower. I let that, you know, the nozzle that is like a massage spray. I hot water in the back of my neck for the longest time. It felt better when I got out of the shower. I felt like my headache went away. And then as soon as my body dried off, here came my headache again. So I woke up this morning and I, I was already behind schedule. And I just, man, I can feel it right now. I had an awful night last night. My body's tired, want more sleep. check my brake pads. The reason why I didn't come all the way to a stop, I was already pushing hard enough on my brakes. I've had this scooter now for 10 months going on 11 and uh, I think it's time to do the little brake pad inspection. You know that little the back uh, drum brake? They have a little bolt that you can twist to make. Yeah, I haven't done that yet. So I, I believe my drum brake's okay, but just my front brake I'm worried about. I think yeah, I've worn down those pads pretty good by now. Every time I stop, I'm always pushing down both lever, or levers, you know? Even with the motorcycle, I don't ever just use just one brake. Look at that old tractor, guys. You got all these new ones right here. <laughs> but look at the mascot. Come on, the mascot. <laughs> oh, crap. I went a little bit too fast on that bump. Man, the sun's hella bright for me. I'm hoping it's not so bright for you guys. I hope the GoPro setting does something right with this sun. That way it's not so bright on you guys. But I'm squinting, I'm squinching my eyes right now. It's just really bright. supposed to bring home something. I forgot what I was supposed to bring home. Some Mexican bond, I think. So we're going to head off to the Mangaria right now, which is basically the donut shop. There's uh, Mexican donuts. Mexican bond, which basically is bread. Mexican bread. He 
think we were both going straight. Hey, I, I put my high beam on her. That's what I normally do. Whenever I uh, want the person to go before me. I just, when you arrive at the same time to a stop sign, I'll just put my high beam up and down on them. This road's got hell of these speed bumps, man. Oh, I'll be down. Look at that. I remember when I uh, started my video this morning. I think I mentioned that uh, this should be coming off a of full. Being that this is my third day riding with my... Every three days I ride this scooter, it comes off a of full. It'll stay full for... If I fill it up today... Three days from now, it, it, it'll start making its way off of full. But it stays on full for three days, man. Surprising it hasn't came down yet. There goes the motorcycle cop that way, so guess what, guys? I'm not going that way. Yeah, I am. I ain't doing nothing. I have my blinker on all this time. I'm sketched out, man, because the motorcycle cop here in our town is known to pull over... Uh, cars more than the, the how should I say this all the residents that I've talked to about hey uh, beware about the motorcycle cop guy because he just pulls over people really for the littlest reasons I, I mean I, I haven't been pulled over by, by him but I've seen like medical transportation people I've seen uh, in one day like the guy, at this time I was riding with medical transportation the non-emergency medical transportation that's when I used to ride with them he kind of picked me up and he goes man I got a damn ticket on the way to pick you up this morning and then uh, we were heading to the freeway and then he goes there's the same one that pulled me over and he had another med non-emergency non medical transportation unit pulled over so he was targeting uh, medical transportation people for going over I guess they're in a hurry to pick up their next client to get into their appointment and if they're just over that speed limit by five miles an hour, they're getting pulled over. So that's what he was doing that morning. I thought it was pretty awful, you know. I don't see these uh, non-emergency medical transportation people doing like hella speeding. But maybe uh, a little bit over the speed limit. I'm trying to get to their next uh, person. Yeah, I guess law's law. You gotta go the speed no matter who you are. Speed limit if you're non-emergency medical transportation or not. This is my son at work this morning. I think that's his car. Proud of that boy. Proud of both of my sons. I got two boys, man. They're already grown men and they got their own lives going together and uh, very proud of them, man. on YouTube <laughs> uh, just being goofy man well yeah welcome man this is all gonna be one video so I'm not gonna do my intro again but um yeah we already done knocked out the uh, appointment series already and we're currently back in Turlock California our next stop right now is gonna be the Pandaria which is the Mexican donut shop I call it is where they sell Mexican sweet bread. Sorry, a couple more blocks right up here. I'm gonna have to adjust my brakes. That little nut in the back. Look at that cop right there. He's sitting in the shade. He's probably doing. He's doing both. Probably just relaxing, doing a little report. And he's watching anybody that's trying to run a red light or speed through here. Good little spot, being in the shade. Normally I got my blinker on. Sometimes I forget to turn off this damn blinker.
think the law is <clears throat> that you have to, if you have your visor open, you have to have goggles on. So whenever this light turns green, just because that cops there, I'll probably put down my visor. Oh, it's the next stop, not this one. Man, that car, that car stopped way back there for some reason. Here we go. Now I turn right. This is where I come to for the Mexican sweet bread, guys. I got awesome good deals, awesome good bread in here. I'll be with you guys in just a few, okay? Be right back. Guys, that was pretty quick. Like, in and out. Got a whole bag of, a whole bunch. I mean, about the big old loaf. I told him I, I want the... You know, before they cut it and put it on display for anybody to buy, I said, I want the whole loaf. Two of those whole loaves of this certain kind of bread. And then I took the strawberry swirl looking ones. I love those ones. Yeah, but amazingly, man, only 22 bucks for like maybe two weeks worth of bread, man. Very, uh, I like coming right here. Always fresh, cheap, and they're very kind. That guy was just looking at my scooter, man, and his mind is probably thinking he would like something like that, you know? That's what I did before I bought this scooter. I would look at people on their motorcycles, their scooters, and I was like, man, I want to get... See, when I was a kid, guys, I've always wanted a motorcycle. I've always, uh, I was raised up on a... I was raised up have uh, My parents always did their best to get us what we wanted or needed, and... But, you know, a motorcycle was just too expensive, you guys. But uh, I had a friend that had a few motorcycles, and I would always want to go and visit him and go to his house and stay the night so we could always ride motorcycles. And here I am as an adult, man. I, I had uh, one Honda 750 uh, Nighthawk, and that was a nice little motorcycle, but I got that one impounded, and now I'm going to be a owner of two scooters. So I got the 150 cc on the way, as most of you already know, and then I got this one here. And it feels great, man, to finally have my own motorcycles that I've always wanted since I was a kid, you know? They're a fun ride, man. I really dig these here uh, two-wheel machines. It looks a little weird with those ugly saddlebags. I think they're ugly, man, if you ask me. But to get the job done, it's better than to have them on your lap. When it comes to shopping, man, I could put two gallons of milk here and two gallons of milk there, but I normally get gallon of milk and gallon of orange juice. So I, if I wanted to, I could have, uh, then they got the side pockets. Yeah, I could, whoa, they're very convenient, man. Only $26 on Amazon. I got my hoodie in there. Then over here, I got my hat and my gloves.
all right guys this really uh pretty much cuts it for this here video thank you guys for watching if you stuck all the way to the end thank you man and if you can put uh your finger on that thumbs up button that really help my uh youtube videos get out there generated out there in front of more people's eyeballs with that being said you guys man you guys are awesome every single one of my subscribers thank you man i appreciate your guys' uh, support i really do and uh, i'll see you guys on the next video man Thank you so much. Have a blessed day.